Hi, this is Pam from the Hooked on Sewing blog. In this video tutorial, I'd like to show you how easy it is to sew a Christmas stocking. First, let's take a look at the supplies that you'll need. You will need some cotton fabric for the exterior fabric of your stocking, a quarter of a yard for the cuff and loop, and a half a yard of fabric for your lining. You'll also want to use some fusible interfacing or fusible fleece and some matching thread. You'll want to have a pair of scissors, a rotary cutter, and a cutting mat. I definitely recommend using those. You will also want to have some sewing pins or some wonder clips, an iron, an ironing board, of course your sewing machine, and I like to recommend that you use a 9014 sewing machine needle and a walking foot. You don't have to use those. You can use a universal needle and you can use your regular uh, presser foot, but a walking foot will help you to sew through the layers easier. The first thing that you're going to want to do after you put your pattern together is to cut out your fabric. Here I'm using paper weights to hold my pattern down, my rotary cutter, and my self-healing mat. I'm keeping my fingers away from the cutting blade and I'm just following along the outline of the pattern to cut out two layers of the cotton fabric. And I'm going to use my ruler to help me keep that top nice and straight and I will use my rotary cutter right along the edge of my acrylic ruler. And then, uh, okay, so sometimes I'm at a weird angle, especially when I'm trying to film and it, uh, I don't cut the fabric just right, but not a problem. So I will finish cutting around this um, pattern with my rotary cutter. If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can pin your pattern in place and then use your fabric scissors to cut out around the pattern. We will need two pieces of fabric cut out for the exterior of the stocking, two pieces for the lining, and then two pieces of fusible interfacing or fusible fleece uh, for the stocking as well. And then we will also cut out some contrasting fabric for our cuff. And I usually uh, cut the loop out of the same fabric that I cut my cuff out of, but, but you'll see that here in a second. So I'm just trimming this up a little closer to my pattern. And then the next thing that we're going to do is I will get out my interfacing and we will cut that out. And I forgot to video me cutting out the fabric for my cuff and my loop, but here you'll be able to see that I have cut those pieces of fabric out as well. I have one piece of fabric cut out for the cuff and I've gone ahead and uh, pressed it and pressed it in half lengthwise. Yep, this is for my cuff, and you'll see that I went ahead and I just pressed that fabric in half lengthwise. And when I cut out the interfacing or the fusible fleece for the cuff, it's only the width of the half of the fabric that I have folded. So it's not going to be the full height of the cuff, it's just going to be half the height. And then I don't use any interfacing in my loop fabric, and there I have that cut too. So now I'm doing the same thing for my inner or for my lining fabric. I've got my pattern laid out. I'm using my paper weights or my fabric weights around the pattern. I'm keeping my fingers away from my rotary blade. I'm just kind of holding the pattern down in place as I go. And again, I'm going to cut out two pieces of lining. I have my fabric folded over the salvage edges, salvage edges uh, even and I am just cutting out my two pieces at the same time again tracing around my pattern with my rotary cutter and you see how I kind of have my fingers here in front of my blade you just got to be really careful go slow don't get your fingers too close to your blade and then cut out that fabric and there I have um, the lining pieces I'm going to use my acrylic ruler again uh, to cut a, to line up the edge straight across the top and cut across there. Okay, so we have all of our fabric pieces cut out, and now we need to cut out the fusible interfacing. So I will take my stocking pattern again. I have my fusible interfacing folded in half. 
and I'm just going to continue cutting out around my pattern for the interfacing portion of my stocking. So just take your time and go slow if you're not comfortable or you're new to using a rotary cutter. And just be sure to keep your fingers out of the way and follow along the edge of the pattern. Like I said, if you don't have the fabric weights, you can use pins to pin down your pattern and then just use your rotary cutter to cut around the pattern or you can use a pair of fabric scissors. Okay, so now I had just need one piece of fusible fleece cut out for the cuff. So I'm going to use my acrylic ruler, line it up here. I'm going to kind of straighten this piece up first, cut this out. <clears throat> and now that I have a nice straight edge there, I can use that to cut out my stocking, uh, my stocking interfacing for the cuff. And I'm going to do it four and a half inches wide and then cut it the full length of the uh, cuff. Just use line up my ruler and then cut across that. Okay, so now we're going to go over to the ironing board and we'll take all of our fabric pieces and our fusible interfacing. So I'm going to lay my fusible interfacing with the bumpy side next to the wrong side of my fabric for the cuff. Then I'll just fold that fabric down and use my iron to press the interfacing to that fabric piece. And then I'm just making sure I have that fleet or that interfacing fused to my fabric really well and keeping my iron away from the sticky side of that fusible interfacing. Um, once I have that pressed, then I can move on to the stocking. So there I have the cuff piece with the interfacing fuse to it. Now be sure to follow your manufacturer's instructions for the fusible interfacing or the fusible fleece that you are using. So I'm going to take my exterior fabric pieces for my stocking and I will place a piece of the fusible interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric with the bumpy side next to the wrong side of the fabric. So if you look at your fusible fleece or your fusible interfacing and if you touch it, you can feel a difference between one side and the other. The side that has the fuse that is fusible will be rougher and that is the side that you want to go next to the wrong side of your fabric. So once I have those where I want them, I will fuse them in place again with my iron. And I will kind of press, lift a little bit, move it, press. I'm not really dragging it across the fabric, I'm pressing and lifting. But again, follow the instructions for the type of brand of interfacing or fusible fleece that you are using. Um, just be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions. And again, I will repeat that with the other side of the stocking. Make sure I have my interfacing and my fabric edges lined up and then press with my hot iron. And then once we have these three pieces all nicely fused, um, we are gonna take them over to our sewing machine and prepare to sew the pieces together. And again, we didn't apply any interfacing to the loop. You can if you want to, but I have found through the years that it's not necessary, so I didn't include that in this pattern. So take all your fabrics over to your sewing machine. 
And the first thing we're going to do is prepare our loop. So we're going to fold it in half lengthwise with the right sides together. And using a quarter inch seam allowance, we're going to stitch down that long edge, back stitching at the beginning and the end to secure our stitches. And then just stitch down the long edge. I'm using, I think, a 2.4 a stitch length and a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I will take that loop and turn it right side out. You can get a bobkin or you can use a safety pin or you can just work it with your fingers, whatever works for you to turn that fabric right side out. Then once you have that fabric loop right side out, I'm going to take it back over to my sewing machine and press it first. And so that seam that's, that we just stitched is nice and flat. Just kind of opening it up here, making sure. And we'll get that nice and flat. I'll take it over to my ironing board and press that again real well. Okay, now that I have that pressed, I'm going to top stitch along the two long edges of this loop. I increase my stitch length to 3.5 and I'm just stitching about an eighth of an inch away from each of the long edges. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do some quilting on the front and back of the main part of my stocking pieces. So here I'm changing out my presser foot for my AccuFeed foot, which is a type of walking foot that Janome makes for my particular type of sewing machine. And I'm just looking here for my little screwdriver to tighten my screw on the presser foot. There we go. Okay, and again, I'm using a 9014 sewing machine needle because I've got multiple layers to stitch through and that will just help me stitch through these easier. And the first thing I'm going to do, and you can't see it here, but I took a diagonal mark from one edge to the other on my stocking. And I will use that as my first row of stitching kind of at an angle. I'm going to make like this diamond or square pattern across uh, the stocking pieces with my sewing machine. I'm using a 3.5 um, millimeter stitch length. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stitching guide bar and insert it into my presser foot and I'm going to set it so it's about an inch and a half away from my stitch line. So I'll just use my little metal ruler and um, measure from the tip of the needle over to the middle of that arm and make sure it's about one and a half inches. And then when I start stitching my next row, I will line that guide bar up with the previous row of stitching and that will allow me to create perfectly straight lines without having to mark the entire piece of the stocking. So I'm going to repeat that on this stocking. About one and a half inch apart, I'm going to do these diagonal lines, one direction, and then I will switch over to my left uh, quilt guide bar and I will stitch in the other direction. So from left to right here and then right to left to finish it off so that I have this nice diamond pattern going across my stockings. And I would do that with the front and the back of my stocking. This is definitely an optional step. You do not have to do this, but I like the look of the quilting on the stockings. So here I am switching over to my left guide bar and inserting it from left to right. And again, I'll use my little metal ruler, my gauge, to make sure that I'm about an inch and a half from the center of the needle to the center of the guide bar. And then I will line up my previous row of stitching with that guide bar and stitch the next row. And this will help me to stitch pretty even lines that are one and a half inch spaced Right, once I'm through with the quilting, 
I am ready to stitch these stocking pieces together. Also, if you were going to do any embroidery or applique or anything on the front of your stocking, this is when you will want to do that. So I'm done with all the decorating that I'm going to do, so I'm just putting the right sides together and I'm using my Wonder Clips to clip all the way around the edges for the two exterior fabric pieces of my stocking. Once I have that clipped all the way around, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance, a 2.4 millimeter probably stitch length to stitch these stocking pieces together. And I am still using my AccuFeed foot, although I could switch over to my other foot if I wanted, or you could just use a regular presser foot. But the AccuFeed foot helps to put pull all those layers together evenly from the top and the bottom so that I don't have, you know, my fabric doesn't get misaligned or bunched up somewhere. It's just a really neater way to stitch multiple layers of fabric together. And again, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and stitch all the way around my stocking, removing the clips as I approach them. And just take your time and go slow when you get to the toe and the heel and the parts that have the curves and just do the best you can to keep those lines nice and smooth. And don't forget to remove, if you're using pens, to remove your pens or remove your clips. You certainly don't want to sew over top of a pen and end up breaking your sewing machine needle. So I'm just gently guiding my fabric around, trying to keep it at a quarter of an inch removing my clips as I approach those and sew around the hill and then back up the back of the stocking for the exterior piece. Okay, now we're going to clip these curves. I like to trim notches out in all the curves, uh, the outward curves, so around the toe and the heel, I'll just trim out these notches. That way when we turn the stocking right side out, uh, it will reduce some of that bulk. And then I'll clip, clip the curves uh, like at the top of the foot and the back of the heel. Okay, and then I'm just going to repeat exactly what we did with the exterior pieces of the stocking with the lining. I'll line up the raw edges, clip it all together with the right sides together, and then I'll start stitching along the top front edge of the stocking, so going down the front towards the toe. And then I'm going to stop just above the heel, reinforce my stitches, and leave about a three inch opening so we can turn our stockings inside out when we're finished stitching them together. So here I'll stitch around the toe, around the foot of the stocking, around the heel, And then when I get just a little ways up past the hill, I'm going to stop, back stitch, cut my thread, go forward two or three inches, and then start stitching, making sure I back stitch to reinforce my stitches at the beginning and the end of that as well. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to clip the curves. I'm going to notch the hill, the toes, and clip the other curves. All right, now that we have this done, we are ready to actually put the stocking pieces together. So I'm going to take my exterior stocking piece here and I'm going to turn it right side out and just reach my hand down inside the stocking, grab a hold of the toe part and pull it out. And then once I have it right side out, I'll use my hand to kind of try to smooth out the seams and make sure all the fabric is pushed out. And then I'm actually going to take it over to my ironing board and press it again too, just to get those seams nice and flat. And now I'm going to insert the exterior piece of the stocking inside the lining piece of the stocking. Make sure the fabrics are right side together so the exterior piece should be right side out, the lining piece should be right side in or wrong side out, and make sure that the toe of the exterior piece is going down into the toe of the lining piece. 
Okay, so next we're going to prepare that cuff piece. I'm going to unfold the cuff, line up the short edges, and I'm going to stitch using a quarter inch seam allowance, reinforcing my stitches by back stitching at the beginning. Make sure I have the raw edges and the seams in the middle lined up, and then stitch along a quarter of an inch seam allowance and back stitch at the end to reinforce my stitches. Then I will fold this so that it is back to a folded wrong sides together. I'll smooth out the side seam so it lays nice and flat. I just kind of use my fingers to press that down. Okay, so now I'm ready to clip or pin my cuff into place. I'll take the exterior stocking piece, which is right side out, and put the cuff over top of it, lining up the raw edges, and I'm going to line up the seam of the cuff with the back seam of the stocking, so the seam that goes down towards the heel. I want to line all those pieces up and make sure the seams are all laying nice and flat, and then just pin or clip them in place. And then I will pin or clip the opposite side and just work my way around the stocking, around the cuff, pinning or clipping it in place so the raw edges are all lined up and the side seams are laying nice and flat and open. And once I have that, we are ready to uh, attach the uh, loop. So again, I'm just continuing to line those edges up and clipped it in place. Now I'm going to take my loop and attach it to the back seam where the hill is at the top. So I'm going to take that seam, the back seam, and although here it looks like I'm putting it between the cuff and the stocking, it really needs to go on the outside of the cuff. I realized this before I sew it together and fix it, but so you put the loop on the outside of the cuff with the raw edges even right along the back seam and then pin or clip all that together and then push that stocking and the cuff down into the lining piece of your stocking lining up the back seam of the lining with the back seam of your stocking and the loop so there'll be quite a few layers there but just get that lined up as well as you can and then pin or clip it all together it's one of the reasons I like to use these wonder clips because they do a great job of holding multiple later layers together. So once we have that all clipped in place, we are ready to stitch it. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance to attach the cuff and the lining and the exterior fabric and the loop and sew all the way around all that fabric together. I'm going to go ahead and use a half inch seam allowance. So here I'm getting it all lined up. Again, I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance and stitch all the way around the top edge of that stocking. This will stitch the lining, the loop, the cuff, and the exterior pieces of the stocking all together. Now when you stitch over the loop on that back seam, it's going to be a thick layer. And just take your time, go nice and slow, and then you'll want to also back stitch over that loop area to reinforce the loop. You know, when your stocking is filled with goodies, you're gonna to want to make sure that loop is nice and secure, so we wanna stitch over it to secure it. Again, I'm just working my way around the stocking, sewing a half inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna reinforce that loop area again, so I'm just gonna stitch again within that half inch seam allowance over it back and forth a couple of times just to make sure I have that loop secured. And then once I'm done with that, I am ready to turn my stocking right side out. Remember when we stitched the lining together that we left an opening for turning the stocking. Well, we're going to use that opening in the back of the lining piece to pull our fabric out. So we'll just grab a hold of the exterior fabric piece and pull it out through that opening. And just kind of give it gentle tugs until you have everything turned right side out. Then once you have it turned right side out, 
you can either hand stitch or use your sewing machine to stitch that opening closed. And that's what I'm doing here. I've just pressed the seam allowance inside that opening using about an eighth of an inch or less uh, seam allowance here. And I'm going to stitch that opening closed. I will back stitch the beginning and the end to secure my stitches. And then I will finish with turning that stocking right side out. So I'm going to stuff the lining back inside the exterior piece of the stocking, use my fingers to kind of press out all the seams and push out all the curves and get it lined up. And there you have your finished stocking. All you have left to do is to press the seams nicely. So you have a few options for finishing your stocking. You can leave it exactly like it is. You can do some top stitching along the top and the bottom of the cuff. And if you wanted to, you could do an under stitch to the stocking where the stocking and the lining and the cuff and all those pieces meet right along the close to the seam uh, on the lining side, you can just stitch a real narrow stitch all the way around and that will help that seam to lay nice and flat. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial on how to sew a Christmas stocking. I hope you found this enjoyable. If so, please like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please come visit me over on the Hooked on Sewing blog. Thank you.